Hi, Hi SCC, SCC Sycamus. We are from Miller College of the Bible here at Sunny Bray, and we're just so glad that we can worship with you today. Um, as we start off, just listen to these words from Psalm 33, 8 to 12. It says, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people whom he has chosen as his inheritance.
Happy Sunday morning. Happy Palm Sunday. This is the day we celebrate the beginning of Holy Week when Jesus rode into Jerusalem to set us free from our sin and save us. And uh, the courage of our great Savior is displayed on his entrance into Jerusalem. And we're going to talk about that today. Um, welcome. Sandra and I are uh, taking it easy this weekend. So uh, I'm not at the hub this morning, but I am live with you. And it's good to see good to see you. Keep commenting and saying hi. I love it when I see people uh, um, watching live. It's good to have you. There's somebody named Danica. Welcome, Danica. Look, there's Brenda. Brenda, you're on the air too. That's good. There you go. It's good to have you guys here. Hey, uh, we want to thank the Miller um, College, uh, Miller Bible School, Bible College. Wake up, Bob. We, we're glad that Miller's doing the worship for us this morning, and uh, we appreciate the work they put into recording the worship for us, and it was good to have them. It's good to see Jennifer, who used to come to our church uh, when she was a student with with Miller uh, leading worship today. She's working at Miller right now this year, and uh, she's a good leader, and thankful for all the um, all the students there that are serving our church this morning by doing worship. Hey, let, let's start with a prayer today, okay? Father, I thank you that no matter where we are, you are there, and your spirit binds us together as family. We pray for your grace um, upon us that we could learn of you, Jesus, and learn to be more like you, and to um, know that you rode into that big city, knowing that five days later you would die for our sins, and, and that seven days later you'd rise from the dead. And we thank you so much that we are alive in you, that we're accepted by you, that you are our king, and that you have given us new life. Thank you, Lord, for this week to remember the greatness of our faith, because you are great. And we thank you so much for being with us this morning through your spirit. We love you, Father God, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, guys, got a couple of uh, announcements for you this morning that are uh, um, important and something to keep in mind. We've got Good Friday. Good Friday is happening. Um, we're having communion at the Hub uh, three times. We can have 25 at each uh, communion. You'll be outside, so if it's raining, bring an umbrella. But we're going to have communion set up, and we're going to sing a couple songs and, and worship together and partake of communion at 9, 10, and 11. So what I want you to do is look at the ad that Kim will put on uh, Facebook and Instagram. It's got my phone number at the bottom. And uh, please uh, phone, text me and let me know if you're coming. I'm going to have three lists of 9, 10, and 11 for, for Good Friday. And uh, that's going to be a good time as a church family in smaller numbers to celebrate Please wear a mask uh, when you come, and then we will, um, of course, you be able to take it off for the communion. And also, the good news is that next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Yeah, it's going to be good. So Easter Sunday is going to be uh, a drive-in service at the Legion parking lot, downtown Sycamus. Big paid parking lot. Um, show up in your car. Please stay in your car. And uh, you can undo the windows, and we will bring communion and and uh, to you in, in your car, and uh, I mean snacks to you in your car for your family, and and uh, join us for Easter Sunday. I would get there early, start showing up at 9.30 to park your car, we'll have parking attendance, and we will have a great Sunday celebrating Easter together. That's right, it's Bob's Books this morning. I want you guys to get into the habit of coming to the Hub, making yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, and sitting down and going to our lending library and grabbing one of these good books that I work hard to get you because they're good for your heart and soul. Way better for you than Netflix, way better for you than the news. Come by and get these books. I mean, I've got so many of them, and they're free to give away. And you turkeys need to come by the hub and take advantage of my hard work and get yourself a free book to read with your coffee in the morning. Okay, so this is The Pursuit of God by Tozer. Small book, amazing book. One of the books that changed my life. Soul Cravings by Erwin McManus. This will stir your heart and soul. Just read half a chapter at a time with your coffee in the morning before you go to bed at night. I've got these Abundant Life New Testaments. They will introduce you to a relationship with Jesus. You might want to keep one, get one just to have in your car for when you run into somebody that needs hope. Have this available with you in your toolbox. Okay, I've got this great book. I picked up two of them this week. 
Then sings my soul. If you love the hymns like I do, these are the stories behind the world's greatest hymns. I've got two volumes of this you can borrow, okay? Then sings my soul. It's good for the soul to go over the stories of why they make these hymns. Kids, look what I got for you. You can borrow the Action Bible devotional. This is an amazing graphic novel that helps you do your devotions and tells you about Jesus. This amazing comic artist and writer was hired by Marvel in D.C. He's trained in the same schools. Amazing. This is the Action Bible devotional. Come by and get this. And guys, I can't tell you how excited I am. You probably know because it's me. That next Sunday, Easter Sunday, at 5 p.m. on YouTube, they're premiering Season 2 of The Chosen. And if you want to catch up, there's only 8 episodes in Season 1. I've got the DVD if you're stream-challenged like my parents were and you don't know how to um, stream it to your TV, you can borrow this DVD. It's an old-fashioned way to watch movies. So come by and borrow this, the first person to do that. They'll be available tomorrow at the Hub in the morning, I'll be there at 9. So pop by and take advantage of our lending library. And if you're a Kindle reader like me, then buy this book by Tim Keller. It just came out. Hope in Times of Fear, the meaning and re the, the Resurrection and the Meaning of Easter. I just bought this for my iPad. It's great. This book um, will, will really encourage your soul. And he just wrote it. He, he started reading this, writing this book three weeks before he found out that he had pancreatic cancer and in the middle of the pandemic and it is a book that we need to read these days so get it it's really affordable it's on on amazon just get it for your kindle app and read the meaning of easter by tim keller there enough of the cheesy intro i just thought i'd grab your attention with something different this week but folks hey we're here to worship jesus He's our great God and King, and I want you to, um, to think about Him um, maybe in a new way today. We're always praying that new, new, new truth will come to our soul from the Bible. It never wears out. So let's start by worshiping Him because He is great. Let's worship with the Miller's band. Hi, Hi. SCC Sycamus.
The next day, the large crowd that had come to the Passover festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the King of Israel. Jesus found a donkey and rode on it, just as the scripture says. Do not be afraid, city of Zion. Here comes your king, riding on a young donkey. His disciples did not understand this at the time, but when Jesus had been raised to glory, they remembered that the scripture said this about him and that they had done this for him. The people who had been with Jesus when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from death had reported what had happened. That was why the crowd met him because they heard he had performed this miracle. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, we are not succeeding at all. Look, the whole world is following him. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip, he was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. And the two of them went and told Jesus. The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I'm telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain, unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Those who love their own life will lose it. Those who hate their own life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me so that my servant will be with me where I am and my father will honor anyone who serves me. Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me. But that is why I came. So that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven. I have brought glory to it, and I will do so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice, and some of them said it was thunder, while others said an angel spoke to him. That's a clip from uh, the Book of John movie, which is all on YouTube if you want to see it. It's word for word, the whole Book of John. And that's why this morning we showed uh, the passage about Palm Sunday from John chapter 12. Um, and it's very well done. Shows us uh, what happened on the first Palm Sunday. Let's pray really quick. Father, I thank you for this word that is truth. I pray that it would be embedded deep into our hearts today. You would give us uh, what we don't have right now. Teach us what we do not know. Give us courage where we are lacking in that, Lord. And give us uh, your grace 
to be stronger because we were in the word today for me and the folks that are watching in Jesus name help us amen so John chapter 12 folks if you're in there it's uh we started at verse 12 there that's where the clip started and that's where uh, I I'm starting to preach this morning um it talks about that day Palm Sunday 2000 years ago where Jesus entered Jerusalem and you saw them take those palm branches and lay them down. Matt Marr, a Christian singer-songwriter, um, mentioned on his teaching video this week that um, palm branches were a sign of rebellion. And so what, were hap what was happening was the people were saying, this guy, Jesus, is our king, and they were laying palm branches down. And that was throwing down the gauntlet for the, for the Pharisees and the Romans saying that this is our king, we're rebelling against the current system. And uh, there's that interesting word, Hosanna, and uh, it means Lord save. And Hosanna is the term that uh, that these folks use. They they were saying, "You are the blessed one. You are the one that can save us, Jesus, from the Romans." That's what they're saying. They were saying, "You are God's anointed. You are the Messiah, and we want you to take down Rome, save us from them." And they were saying, "Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord." Um, this would have ticked off the Pharisees and Herod, the, the, the puppet king um, of Jerusalem, and Pilate, the governor. They were, the crowds were saying the only one capable of saving us is the blessed one who comes in the name of the Lord. Pharisees, we don't trust you anymore. Herod, we don't want you. You're a sham king. We don't want you, Pilate. You're a Roman. This is going to be our king. So they laid down those palm branches in a sign of rebellion. And they said, blessed is this king, the king of Israel. So this would have ticked off everyone who was in power. But the interesting thing is that Jesus did something no one would have expected. Verse 14, he says, he got, it says he got on a donkey. Now, what was he thinking, right? I mean, you want to be the Messiah? You have a grand entrance, right, on a big white horse. Um, but Jesus found a donkey to ride. Interesting thing about a donkey is it's like the lowliest of riding animals. Most people will never ride on it. Secondly, it's got a cross on the back of its back. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? As if maybe God designed the donkey from the beginning of creation to have like a dark cross of, of, of a mane on its back, knowing that the donkey would carry Jesus the King of Kings to the cross. I thought that was interesting. But the most inter interesting thing about it is this. Um, riding a donkey, Jesus was saying he was the approachable king. And the prophet said, don't be afraid, daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. No one would have expected the Messiah to show up this way. And what this tells us is that Jesus isn't a king that you need to be afraid of approaching. You can come to him. He belongs to the common man. Even riding on that donkey, he was the same level as the people walking. Down here, kings of the earth rarely invite a normal person like you and me to hang out with them, to be their personal friend. You would have to be a common person that did something extraordinary to get recognized at uh, the White House or be brought to Parliament to receive the Order of Canada. But Jesus is a different kind of king. Unlike Herod, spoiled brat, unlike Caesar, who would build his kingdom on the backs of slaves, unlike Pilate, who would rule with intimidation um, and crucify thousands, which he did. Unlike the Pharisees, who were exalting themselves up to be the only ones that got God, Jesus was saying, I'm attainable. I'm an approachable king. I'm available to you. And Jesus is available to every one of us. And get this, he's a different kind of king too because he's the king of your heart. He would become the king of the human heart before he would become the king who's coming again one day and he will come in glory and overwhelm mankind he was giving people a chance to come to him willingly by riding on a donkey and uh contrast the arrival of jesus on a donkey with the arrival of pilate when he came from rome to the to the roman garrison in jerusalem pontius pilate entered jerusalem from his home in caesarea and I, i've been there it was a grand place to live his Pilate's procession the governor um, there in Jerusalem was in the Roman style right 
complete with a terrifying display of Roman military might. Pilate was perched atop a majestic stallion. He had all the trappings of Roman wealth and prestige. His procession was a proclamation of Rome's superiority to crush. And it came with an undeniable message. Pilate was coming into Jerusalem during Passover, the week of Passover, to tell the pilgrims who had come to the holy city, you better keep the peace or we will control you by force and crush you. Now, Jesus, on the other hand, he comes into Jerusalem, showed us the king of kings riding on the most non-threatening, non-majestic beast imaginable, a donkey with the garb of a commoner. He's not dressed in a royal robe. Callous hands of a carpenter, not the pampered, manicured hands of a Roman governor. His procession was a proclamation of his humility, not his superiority, even though he was the king of kings. It was a proclamation of his humility, and it came with the undeniable message directed to the people who had gathered in the city from near and far. The message was this, Come to me, all you who are tired and worn out, sick of religion, poor, the downcast, the slaves, the free, rich and poor, I will give you rest. He was saying, I'm an approachable king. And, you know, contrast that with the Pharisees too, right? The Pharisees... Um, Jesus was throwing down the gauntlet for these guys that were saying that they represented God. They were not representing God well at all. The gloves were off. Palm Sunday, his entrance into Jerusalem, defied the Pharisees. And uh, they could handle um, so much of this, this upstart young Messiah. But this procession through the, through the streets was intolerable. This fanatic... And usurper must be put down finally, was what they were thinking. Jesus, in that tumultuous hour, a commentator says, was issuing a challenge to the Pharisees. Every token of royal honor which he accepted that day gave point to the challenge, and every hosanna of the crowd drove it home. Let the powers of evil do their worst. He knew their power. He was the king's anointed. He knew his power. He was riding to the throne which God had given him. He was ready for the last campaign, but he wasn't going to assume the throne by force. He was going to be glorified by laying down his life. The Pharisees teach us one thing that's important. Don't make God in your image. Don't look at God through human eyes. Verse 19 says, look how the whole world's gone after him. They, they, they thought Jesus was going to take over by human means. The Pharisees thought that Jesus was going to um, be like a William Wallace type, Braveheart type figure riding on this big horse. One thing that you and I do, one thing that we struggle with, I struggle with on a daily of this, is I want things my way. The Pharisees wanted things their way. And when someone who's above me shows me that my way is the wrong way, I have a tendency to disagree and write them off. We all do. In the case of the Pharisees, here was Jesus, the God-man, Riding into Jerusalem, showing them what God really looks like. Showing them that unlike the Pharisees, Jesus is the approachable king. He's the religious leader who doesn't condemn like the Pharisees did. And he's not like the Pharisees who say, you got to get up to our level to be accepted by God. you got to know all the scriptures like we do. you got to have a Bible degree. you got to have your masters. They were the experts on on God. And uh, whereas... They said, get to our level. Jesus said, I'm God coming down to your level. And you don't need to know anything except that I love you and I'm here for you. I'm here to die for you. Jesus came down to our level. When I was a kid, I loved a song that was called He Came Down to Our Level when we couldn't get up to his, right? And that's because Jesus is the world's only humble king. He showed us, like I said, what God was like, riding at eye level. And uh, the Bible says at first his disciples didn't understand this because um, they were looking at it too through human eyes, right? They didn't realize that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, even though he had told them before, to die for the sins of the people. They didn't understand it because they were looking at Jesus as a human Messiah to solve their just merely human problems, right? The, The physical problems. And often that's what we want. We want God to solve the pandemic, but we need to look deep inside and say, okay, what needs to be solved in me? I need to check my heart, not just the external circumstances, right? The disciples were just looking at the external. And um, the disciples were saying, yes, Jesus, 
set us free. The boy saw it. This was it. This is the moment. He's coming into Jerusalem. He's going to take down Rome. They didn't yet understand that he was on his way to his death. You and I have an advantage over the disciples, that's for sure. Um, at the time, they couldn't extricate themselves from the circumstances around them of Roman occupation. So they couldn't help but want Jesus to be riding into Jerusalem to deliver them from the Roman oppression. But you and I have the same disadvantage as they did. Um, we're human, and we cannot extricate ourselves sometimes from the, our circumstances that we're in the middle of right now. Maybe we just want Jesus to get us out of this pandemic. Maybe we just want Jesus to solve our external problems. I've talked to some of you this week who cannot see a way out of this situation that we're all in right now, and you're discouraged. You're looking at it through just human eyes. Maybe you're just listening to too many different human opinions but you got to realize that Jesus got on that donkey for you and me today in March of 2021. The same Jesus riding into Jerusalem for those folks died on the cross for you and me too. And he came to give us a peace. And um, I know it seems, just listen to the voice of Jesus today, okay? I know it seems backwards right now. You know, he's riding on a donkey. He's not doing things the traditional way. Um, nothing seems to be working out, but it is. He's still the king, and he's telling you not to be afraid. You can approach him. He is your king in the middle of this weird pandemic that you and me got going on here, that we're in the middle of. And uh, only after Jesus was glorified did the disciples um, realize what he had been telling them for a long time. And I want you to realize that you and I aren't going to get what's going on for a long time, but he's still the same Jesus, still the same king. And uh, now I want you to get a mental picture, okay? That that video we showed, the adaptation of John 12 was very good, but it didn't. they couldn't have got enough people to be the extras in that scene to show how thick the streets were with people that had come to Passover. Jerusalem's population would double for Passover. Pilgrims from all over the world. I want you to imagine Jesus mania sweeping through the city because they heard that Lazarus had been risen from the grave and all the people of Bethany came to the people of Jerusalem. The people of Jerusalem told everybody the Messiah was here. And I want you to picture this Jesus mania going on in the streets, okay? And the Pharisees are going nuts. They're like, look, the whole world has gone after him. So imagine the Pharisees, exasperated people from all over the world, the teeming crowds, People from Greece were there saying, come and talk, tell us about yourself, um, Messiah. The disciples were thinking, this is it. And what does Jesus do? He predicts his death to course correct all of their perception. And he says in verse 23, the time has come for the Son of Man to enter his glory, but it's not what you think. Because unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But he's saying, it's not what you think, what's going to happen is I'm going to die and its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Jesus was saying, it's not what you think. I'm here to die, not take over, but my death will save many, many lives. To all of this fame, Jesus says to the disciples, guys, all of this, all this fame, all this momentum, all these likes on Facebook and Instagram that I'm getting right now, um, this isn't how I'm going to take over the world. I'm going to be glorified, but not how you imagine. I'm going to be a king who dies. I'm going to glorify my humility. I'm going to glorify my humility. And what he's saying is this. Anyone who lose, loves their life, their human life, their popular life will lose it. But anyone who hates their life in the world will keep it for eternal life. This is one of the hard teaching of Jesus. What did he mean? Okay, he says this. If I loved the human fame that I'm getting right now and did it the way the world wants me to, there's no way that you could be saved, that the world could be saved. But if I give up my right to Pilate's throne instead of going and taking it over... If I surrender my life, I'm gaining so much more. I'm gaining the salvation of all mankind and the joy of my Father. And he's saying, 
this is the way that the kingdom works. It's an upside down kingdom. The way to rise to the top is to go to the bottom and serve. The way to be exalted is to get down on your knees with a towel and wash the dirty feet of disciples and wash the sins of mankind away by humbling myself as the king. So Jesus was saying, don't love the way the world does life and success. I'm showing you what real salvation takes. It takes giving up your your rights and becoming a slave to serve. It means giving up your high-paying job as a nanny for a rich family in India and going down the streets of Calcutta and serving dying people like Mother Teresa did. It means um, doing it opposite to the world's way of doing things. And uh, Jesus was saying, this is how salvation is attained. The interesting thing is that he shows us also that even though this is the way it's going to go, it's not going to be easy. And he shows us how human he is. And he shows us that even he had a hard time knowing he was giving up his very life. And, uh, and Jesus says, you got to understand that whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, or you could say, whoever serves me has got to follow me to where I am going. And where was he going? He was going to the cross. He was saying, my servant also will be the person that's going to where I'm going, to the cross. And he says, my father will honor the one who serves me too. And that's why we look up to people that are such good servants of Jesus. And they're not, they're not the rich ones that get the notice of God. They're not the, um, the pastors and mega churches that get the notice of God. It's the people like you and me that have normal jobs, serving in normal towns, under the radar, that sacrifice their life, their resources, their time, to be like Jesus, to reach people that need his help. And Jesus says, that's the, the, you've got to follow me to that place, right? And he also says, it's not going to be easy, right? We follow Jesus to the cross. God honors our sacrifice as well. But that word sacrifice means it's going to be hard. And uh, the kingdom of God will be established in hearts all over the world, but... The way to save people is to spend your life for them. It's going to be a sacrifice. Nothing great in the kingdom was accomplished easily when Hudson Taylor went by himself to China and um, sometimes was starving, lost two wives in China, um, wasn't a popular person. Um, At the time, people mocked him for going there and growing his hair to be long like the men of the land and to dress like one of the, the people from China. But because of his sacrifice... China's half Christian right now. And Jesus says it takes sacrifice. And he tells us it's not going to be easy. He points out, because I'm human too, because it said, he said, my soul is troubled because I know that this is going to be the hardest thing even I've ever done. And I'm the son of God. Um, He said, I know I'm going to be going through false accusations, through sham trial, through beatings and torture, I've seen thousands of people crucified in my lifetime as a man living in in, uh, occupied Israel. This is going to be really hard, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. And um, he he came to a point where he said, Father, what am I going to do? I know my soul's troubled. It's going to be the most difficult thing I've ever done. Am I going to give up? He could have. He could have walked away. Um, But no, I remember my mission. I've come for this very hour. Father, glorify your name. And God answered back from heaven. You saw that on the video. He said, I will glorify my name. I have and I will again. The crowd that heard it said it thundered. Some people thought an angel spoke to him. Jesus said, the voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now's the time of judgment on this world. The prince of the world will be driven out by the hard thing that I'm going to do. And this is the truth. Is because of what Jesus did, God will be glorified and Satan, sin, and death will be defeated. Jesus knew that what it would take to defeat Satan, sin, and death would be the sacrifice. And the sacrifice of Christ and our example of following him, dying to self, living a self-sacrificing life, Sometimes being mocked for our faith. 
um, showing our neighbors humility and um, and and service, maybe mowing your neighbor's lawn when they don't expect it, um, giving up some of your income, maybe a tenth of your income, to to spend on the mission of the church rather than just on yourself. Um, showing your friends at work, your friends at school, what humility looks like, sometimes being mocked for your faith. This is how evil's defeated by following the example of Jesus. And uh, Jesus defeated sin, Satan, and death in a way that nobody expected. And how did he do that? He said, I'm going to be lifted up on a cross. Not lifted up in the way that the world thinks we're lifted up. For years, people misinterpreted the verse where Jesus says, I'll be lifted up. They thought it meant, you know, lift Jesus higher and glorify him, which is true. But what he was saying is, I'm going to be lifted up on a cross. Right? Literally lifted up and put nailed to a cross. And that is going to draw the world to myself. Not um, not getting a, a million likes on Facebook, right? Not um, by receiving uh, the Dove Award for Song of the Year, although that's okay because some songs are amazing. But Jesus says, I'm going to be lifted up on a cross. Billions of people have been led to Christ because of the sacrifice on the cross, which is now empty. He's alive, but first he had to surrender his life to people like you and me. So what's the takeaway today for you and I that live in the world that, that we live in? I think that we have to follow the example of Jesus and we have to humble ourselves. And we realize that Jesus um, is there for us and we should be there for people. Um, we need to realize that we need to be approachable. I want to ask you a question do you have a faith that exudes humility? Do you have a faith where people know how human you are? and um, Or are people afraid of you? There's, there's a question, right? You could be somebody that uh, is a Christian that looks superior and looks like, you know, they're unapproachable and they're better than everybody else. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I love it when there's hum humanity going on our Sunday morning services. It's okay. You can shut your phone off. It's going to stop ringing. Um, you see, the thing is, is that you got to be a humble Christian. So ask yourself the question too, you know, could I be wrong? Do I have to reassess how I'm living out my faith? Because none of us have it together. Don't ever be like the Pharisees and think you've arrived. And because you've got your theology right, now you've definitely got it nailed down. You're good to go or your opinions are firmly cemented, maybe you need to reassess those too. But realize that you might need to be lifted up on the cross this week. Crucify your pride again and again and again. Surrender. Die to your own human per perception of reality. Realize he's the king, we're not, and there might be another way of looking at things. I want you to um, think about a lady named Corrie Ten Boom, okay? She was the daughter of a humble uh, watchmaker, and um, a fixer of watches in, in Holland in the uh, mid-20th century. When the Nazis began to take over, she was thrown into a concentration camp for, uh, and for hiding Jews from the Nazis in a secret room in their upstairs of their house to save their lives from the Nazis. She was thrown in prison for that. And um, amazingly, because of the grace of God, she survived the concentration camp at Ravensbrück. She got out and became an accomplished author when she wrote The Hiding Place and books about Jesus. She became a famous speaker all over the world. Corey Ten Boom was once asked if it was difficult for her to remain humble. Her reply was simple. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday on the back of a donkey and everyone was raising waving palm branches and throwing garments onto the road and singing praises, do you think that for one moment it ever entered the head of the donkey that any of this was for him? She continued, If I can be the donkey on which Jesus Christ rides into his glory, I give him praise all the I will give him all the praise and all the honor. What Corey Tamboon was saying is it's a privilege to be the humble donkey that carries the good news of Jesus. And 
you may never receive any accolades for your work, but every time you bring the good news of Jesus to somebody, you don't mind being the donkey who's not noticed because you're carrying him. And what we're saying is, Lord, exalt yourself, exalt Jesus. May we be humble like that donkey and carry the good news and not care if anybody knows this is us. And that's why um, I think pastors that serve in small towns and have small churches that do great things for the community and never get noticed, who cares? Jesus notices. We're happy to be the donkey, right? Follow the King of Kings to victory in humility. Lift him up. Follow the resolve of Jesus, who humbled himself even to death on a cross, the self-sacrificing attitude of Jesus, how he drew all men to himself, how he's changed the world, where there's two billion of us now that worship him that are alive, not to mention the billions in, in heaven and the billions that are going to come to faith. It came because of his humble sacrifice. He's the humble king. This is your hero. We need to be a hero like him. And this is the challenge to us on Palm Sunday. And today we want to sing, Hosanna, Lord, you're the only one that can save us. You save us. We worship you. And I see the King of Glory coming on uh, in a humble way for you and me today. And he's changing lives. And there's good news. When you are like him, he will use you to change people's lives too. Sing this song with me, Hosanna on Palm Sunday. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. And hear the sound of hearts returning to you return to you and in your kingdom broken lives are made new you make us new cause when we see you we find strength to face the day and in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. You're worthy of 
this morning. Father, I pray that we would see the truth. You'd rearrange our hearts, put us in the back seat, put Jesus in the driver's seat today. Follow his example. Help us not get uppity, but help us be bold about our mission. That you are with us, that we know that we're on the right team. Maybe if today, folks, you need to pray this. I pray, Father, you forgive me for my pride. I give my heart to you. I ask you for your strength to serve the world, to show them what you really look like. Guide my thoughts and then my actions this week. Maybe today, folks, some of you need to pray this for the first time. I make you the king of my heart, Jesus. I believe you rode into Jerusalem to die on the cross for my sins. Forgive my sins, Lord. I thank you that you're alive and that you're my king as of today. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, pop by the hub, get one of these great books that I offered earlier and uh, say hi to me this week. And, um, and remember... Jesus is our king and he's with us. He came to save us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Have a good week. Thank you.